Hello folks, Pastor Rocky Branch. Hope you're doing great today. Get big question on the table this morning. Do you have the power of God in your life? I mean the supernatural move of God in your life. Now, one of the things that we desire to do is to get folks to understand that the Bible is a real book written by real men inspired by the real Holy Spirit that we might grow thereby because this earth is, well, it's not our home. It's going to be burned up according to scripture, and we see evidences of that all the time. How do you feel about the government, about what the government's doing, about how that the government slowly, slowly, slowly is creeping in and going to take over, and of course people will have no say. How do you feel about America in prophecy? Well, America is not... a, a even a force in prophecy. So what's going to happen? You know, how, how important is this spiritual thing to you? Well, it ought to be very important, not only for the future, but for the present. Right now, every day, we have the opportunity to live by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's every day. But that's a call that you've got to make. You see, the Holy Spirit has been given to those that believe. Now, if you've accepted Christ as your Savior, the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. The Bible is very clear on this. He's been given from God through Jesus Christ to you to give you instruction, help, aid, and to do the same for other people. The Holy Spirit's very valuable in each life, not only for eternity, uh, eternity, but also for daily instruction. But can you live your life with the Holy Spirit inside of you and have no power? Well, the answer is yes. You certainly can. You see, power with God is a little different than power with men. Power with men can be achieved by, well, lifting weights, a position that you hold, money that you have, uh, a car, uh, a gun. A lot of things represent power. But supernatural power only comes one way, and that's by way of the Holy Spirit. The reason this is important is because the key element of that power is fellowship. You must have supernatural fellowship. And the Bible is very clear that God will not fill a dirty vessel. So if you are living contrary to the Word of God, you will not have the fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Now this is very important to understand because we've got people across the board that's believing everything on the book that satisfies them and separates them from somebody they don't like instead of looking in the book and finding out what the Bible says. Because the Bible is going to be the key here. Not what somebody says, how somebody acts. Somebody says, ah, well, you know, here's the problem, Pastor. The problem is everybody's got an interpretation. Well, that's true. There's no doubt that's true. But actually, that's not a problem. The Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is unity. There is unity. So when you got 10 or 12, 15 people have a different opinion. Somebody's got a problem there because there's no unity involved. If it's the same spirit, we got a problem. So I need to stick with the book. Say amen right there. I need to stick with the book because the book is going to give me my answers. Not a denomination, not another person, not another group. But it's the book that counts. There's a very sad story in Judges chapter 16 about, well, the strongest man physically. Strongest man that was out there, Samson. Strong, do all kinds of stuff. I don't know whether he had massive muscles, but he had massive strength. And the Bible says in this chapter, the Spirit of God would come upon him. But with Samson's gift, he was foolish with it. He, he, he was careless with it. He, he didn't respect it. He didn't care. Samson wanted to do what he wanted to do instead of what God wanted him to do. And, of course, his strength was in his hair, the story you've heard about Samson getting his hair cut by Delilah, or Delilah had it cut. And in this chapter, in the 16th chapter, the 19th and 20th verse, the 19th verse, he goes to sleep on her lap. She calls the barber and he cuts his hair, uh, cuts Samson's hair. The 20th verse, she wakes him up. And she says, Samson, the Philistines are upon us. And Samson says, I will rise and shake myself and go out as I have before which he had destroyed many things before with his power. I mean, a lot of stuff. He had great power with God. But the Bible says that he did not know that God had departed from him. 
He felt the same physically, but something was missing spiritually. He said, I'll go out and shake myself like I have many times before, and I'll take care of these Philistines one more time. But he didn't understand until he got in the heat of the battle that he didn't have the power that he thought he had. Let me ask you that today. Do you have that power? Oh, physically, you, you may feel like you always felt. But it's not a physical issue. It's a supernatural issue. The, the Spirit of God has to walk in harmony with the Holy Spirit that's in you. It has to go together. It's purity from God to purity in you. And one of the critical things about this is that we have so many people struggling so badly. And the reason they're struggling is because it's not because God's hard to understand. It's not because the Bible has so many different interpretations. It's because the walk is not with the Holy Spirit. It's not a pure walk. You say, well, hey, man, I, I have trouble. I make mistakes. I do too. That's what repentance is for. Admit it and quit it. Proverbs 28, 13. He that covers his sins will not prosper. But whosoever confesseth and forsaketh, God will show him mercy. So wherever you are today, whatever's going on with you, I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you with open arms to say to God, come to him and say, Lord, maybe, you know, maybe I've, I've got some things covered up in here. Maybe I've, I've got my mind somewhere else. Maybe I'm doing some things I shouldn't do. Lord, help me today to stop. Help me today to stop and do what I need to do. Now, if I can help you, obviously, you can get a hold of me any way you can. I, I'll be glad to help you any way I can. I want you to be victorious. I want you to hear me from my heart for just about 30 seconds here. I do not want you going out facing the foes in this world thinking you're in fellowship with God and you go out like Samson and suddenly realize in the heat of the battle, I don't have the power of God in my life. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 5 that you may know. And I want to tell you that you can know. It doesn't have to be a mystery. The old song in the garden, I walk with him and talk with him, is very important. Can two walk together except they agree? Amos says no. So today I want you to examine yourself, as Paul reminded the Corinthian church before they took the Lord's table, the Lord's supper. Examine yourself. See if you're where you ought to be. And then if not, repent. And if you do that, well, God will bless you for it. God bless you. We love you. And goodbye.